It's your boy and Gunnar in the house back with another Arsenal transfer news or rather Arsenal news episode. We have actually come up with another episode wherein we can tell you a lot of things that happened post the game, a lot of interviews that actually happened after the game. So everything will be discussed in this episode. Of course, we're going to talk about how uh, ex-Arsenal players are actually getting into the depth of how Arsenal lost that game, and of course, what are their uh, I mean, what are their reactions to Mikel Arteta? And everything will be discussed in this episode. Of course, the future of Martin Odegaard and of course, Odilon Kusunu. If you remember about that guy, I already uh, I made a video yesterday about him that he's linked with us. But I did not know that he's a midfielder and a centre-back. A right-footed centre-back is what he is actually. And of course, Arsenal are linked with an Inter Milan striker. Yeah. It's that crazy. So all the transfer news and the latest news will be uh, will be discussed in this episode. So consider subscribing if you seek daily Arsenal content 365 days a year. Very well. So here we begin. So Alex Squat. Why did I say Squat? There's something wrong with me. Sorry. Alex Scott questions Arsenal boss Mikel Arteta for playing bang average Martin Odegaard over Emil Smith. Now she's not happy at all about Martin Odegaard's performance. So she's criticized and of course at the same time she's skeptical rather Arsenal should go for him in the future or not. She says, Today you look at Odegaard. For me, he was bang average. And so you, you question the decision actually with Smithrow not being selected ahead of him. I think we are going to see Odegaard's real qualities over the next couple of weeks. Is he good enough to be in the starting eleven of Arsenal? Or actually, is this loan period going to be a short one? We can sit here and keep saying it's a transitional season. And we are waiting to see positives. But actually, we need, to, we need that to come to fruition now. It needs to be a regular thing, not a constant up and down, up and down. We need to see signs of more positivity within this Arsenal side. It hurts me to be here as someone who's Arsenal connected, that I'm sitting here happy to take a 1-0 defeat. And I absolutely get it because Manchester City can rip you to pieces. But when I look at that game, to me that was a Manchester City side in third gear, really. And Arsenal didn't have a shot on target. Or we could still be here and I don't think Arsenal would be threatening. I'm not saying it's all doom and gloom. There were positive signs, but when I assess Manchester City, they weren't even at their best today. Very well. Whew. So Papa Wenger, in a recent interview, says that he's optimistic over Arsenal youngsters Emil Smithrow, Bukayo Saka and Gabriel Martinelli. The trio have, has impressed him and he believes that if they don't, they should be avoiding long-term injuries so that they could actually be something great. He says... Smithrow and Saka already were there when uh, I was there a few years ago. We had always a good good youth system with good young players. It's good to see that they, they come out. We just spoke about injuries and touch wood that these players don't get long-term injuries. It's a sensitive part between the ages of 20 to 22. Once they get game after game to see if their body can adapt and cope with it. Let's hope they, took, they look to me to have top quality and as well a good mentality. So I am quite optimistic for them great to see that but there's somebody who actually came out uh, in reality uh, and spoke to rmc sport that the real problem of arsenal is the lack of concentration or rather arsenal suffering from concentration problems according to nico pepe so pepe spoke to rmc sport about it in a post-match interview he said we have concentration problems we need to fix that we had chances in this match as well in this game there was that goal and then there was nothing we all know that. And even Mikel Arteta opened up about the whole situation. He also admits that his side's poor start to the game ultimately cost them. He says, it's really frustrating because we talked about it, uh, that we had to come out of the blocks really strongly, really convincingly. We did the opposite and we allowed them sometime around the box. Sometimes it's Sterling in the middle of the box with a header against City. If you want to win, you cannot do that. I think after that, we tried to react in the best possible way. I think we matched them up. We had some really good moments. We created some great opportunities, but we lacked the quality around the box to find the right pass and the right man to score the goal. Against this opponent, everything has to be perfect. He's not wrong. It has to be perfect, man. So Martin Keown has come out in a criticism of Rob Holding for a disastrous defending and letting Manchester City take the lead in the second minute straight. So uh, Keown says that centre-back Rob Holding actually forgot the basics yesterday he says uh, a manager can talk tactics with his players until he's blue in the face but manchester city's goal came about because the basics weren't followed 
Rob Holding didn't pick up Raheem Sterling and the 5 foot 7 inch winger scored a winning header with 2 minutes on the clock. It surprised me that Arsenal didn't press Manchester City like they had pressed Leeds in their last home game. It was courtesy of their high press against Leeds that Arsenal won a penalty to make it 2-0. Emil Smithro later picked up possession on the edge of the opposition box before assisting Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang to make it 4-0. Yesterday was different. Arsenal showed the visitors too much respect and City were allowed to dominate. They could bring it out from the back without any pressure. Several times in the first half, Ruben Diaz was sitting as the night watchman while every other City player was within 60 yards of the Arsenal goal. Wow. That includes John Stones, who is the man reborn. He did not miss a beat with his passing and his defending was just as strong. Aubameyang had no joy against him. Also, he said, City boss Pep Guardiola said he's going to have to rotate his team to cope with their schedule. For Mikel Arteta, the front four who finished this game are his best combination and they need to be starting matches. I'd like to see Aubameyang on the left, Lacazette central, Saka on the right and Emil Smithrow in behind. So, it's pretty much clear. I think he's making his assumptions for, uh, he's actually making his uh, thing, uh, he's making his case for um, the, the contest against Benfica coming up next week. So, yeah, that could be that. Moving on to so the Premier League players and staff. Now, the latest rule is exclusively out, according to David Onstein. Well, Premier League players and staff must now self-isolate for 10 days unless to train or compete or on return from any overseas trip lifted via negative tests after five. Also, no more exemptions for new signing manager or coach applies immediately, according to David Onstein. So that's the reality. 10 days of self-isolation, self unless they, whether they have to train or compete. Well, that could be reduced to just five if they, have, they produce a negative test. Yep, that is that. So moving on. So the journalist uh, uh, was uh, asking Pep Guardiola after the game yesterday. He asked, was the game hard because Mikel Arteta knows your tactics? Pep said, no, not because he knows me. Mikel knows everything. He's so good. He's so clever. I learned something new from him today and I hope I can use it in the future. James Benge tweets out, Arteta is calling out everything right down to the passes he wants his players to play and where they should be standing and running. It has been constant. By contrast, Guardiola has hardly said a word. He doesn't need to. And James Benge also tweeted out, I, I asked Arteta about this. He said, Every moment, every position and every detail is key. Probably I do, it, I do it too much, I don't know, but it's very necessary to give them. Unreal, isn't it? And also Arteta also mentioned more about it. He said, to start the way we did, you have to be exceptional for the rest of the game in every department. But we did not do it. We had some good moments, but we lacked the final pass and the quality to score two or three goals. Well, that was Arsenal's, according to Piers Morgan, who tweeted this out as well. That's Arsenal's 11th loss in 25 Premier League games this season. We're 10th in the table, 11 points off top four, and our next five games include Leicester, Spurs, West Ham, and Liverpool. I like Arteta, but this is just not good enough, and he has to start delivering the results. Piers Morgan believes that Arsenal should start delivering the results, courtesy of you-know-who. Moving on, so I already made a video about it yesterday that Arsenal have made Club Bruja midfielder Odilon Kasunu one of their transfer targets for the summer. The 20-year-old was actually uh, rated 8.5 million was the price tag with performance-related bonuses. But here's the reality. Wolves, Inter and AC Milan are set to battle it out for right-sided centre-back Odilon Kisunu. Yes, he's the centre-back who can actually play as a midfielder. That's just one part of his game. So uh, they have been quoted a fee of 20 million pounds. Yes, from 8.5 within a day, 20 million pounds Liverpool have also checked in on him before opting to sign Ozan Kabak on loan instead. Anyways, moving on. So at Arsenal, uh, uh, Marca have actually come up with this. That at Arsenal, they dream of staying with Odegaard at Madrid right now. They have not made a decision. Madrid know that the Norwegian's coexistence with Zidane is very complicated. And therefore, they uh, will consider a good offer for, from Arsenal. Real Madrid leaders sense that the midfielder does not have much desire to return to Madrid after his last outing. So Martin Odegaard might be leaving uh, uh, yeah, Bernabeu. Moving on, Arsenal and Chelsea are showing interest in Inter Milan's 20-year-old Uruguayan striker Martin Cetriano. Yes, Martin Cetriano is an Uruguayan striker who plays for Inter Milan, is being linked with Arsenal and 
Chelsea. So with this, we end this episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you see daily Arsenal content, this is the best place to be. Consider subscribing. Hit that bell icon. I will see you in the next one. Cheers.